This is Jay teaches Reading for All, Lesson 65 and Lesson 66. I don't know if I mentioned this at the end of the last lesson, but we're going to have a short lesson on long U homophones, like two, two, and two. And these two, one, two, do not follow phonetic rules. English is a very phonetically regular language. I would say maybe 85% of the words in English follow the phonetic rules, but there are some notable exceptions, and here are two exceptions, which we'll talk about later. Um, 65, lesson 65, we'll be looking at the combinations of OO and EU making the long U sound Ooh, and there is another U sound, which is the U sound. We're not going to be dealing with that. We're going to be strictly dealing with the long U ooh sound, as in moon and blue. Now, both of these combinations are very unusual. Double O, you would normally think would be maybe a long O sound, but it happens to be a long U sound, and EW, wow, what a strange combination with a W involved there, making the U sound. So, some very unusual things are coming up in these lessons, but right now, we're going to do something that's not unusual. We're going to review the last couple lessons, and lesson 62 we were looking at the long I, made by I-G-H, and Y at the end of a short, short word. So students, say these words before I do. Night. Sight. Right. Bright. Fight, flight, might, high, not low, but high, sigh, by, my, cry, why, Sly, fry, pry, try. Teachers, if you'd like students to read these to you, press pause. And now, teachers, press pause again and have the students read these sentences to you. Now a review of Lesson 63, the long O sound made by OA and OW. So we've got um, these words right here. Students say these before I do. Oats. Boat. Goat. Float, soap, load, road, toad, croak, oak, soak, cloak, Row, mow, slow, blow, snow, sow, 
go no. Again, teachers, if you'd like the students to read these to you, press pause. And now teachers press pause and have students read these sentences to you. Now we go to lesson 64, homophones with the long O. Students, read these before I do. Road, road. So I rode my bike on the road. Moat and moat. The moat protected the castle. It was a large moat with the water that had filled it, and the only way to get to the castle was a drawbridge that had to be lowered. This moat means something that's very tiny, a speck of something. Next. Load. Load. And we are going to load the back of the truck with sacks of corn and we will have a heavy load when we're done. Miners who are uh, mining for coal might, found, might find a load of very high-grade coal. A load means a large deposit. Next. Tow. Tow. So this is like your big toe, and this is toe, which means pulling something along. Uh, for example, you could tow a broken down car with a tow truck. Next. Mow. Mow. The young man, mow, could mow his, yaw, his yard with a mower. All right, that's 64. Teachers, if you'd like, press pause, have the students read these to you. All right, before going on to Lesson 65, I forgot that I wanted to put the sound out sheet up here for those teachers who would like to use it for reviewing the sounds of the letters. Um, of course, we are we are going to be on the long U uh, sounds, which is down here, the last one in the second column. If I can get this oriented. So you'll be doing the rest of the second column on up, and also the entire first column. Now let's, let me get this into focus. Okay, I think I've got it into focus almost right there. So press pause, teachers that want to use this. All right. Now we go to lesson 65. And in this lesson, as mentioned, we have the OO and the EU making the long U oo sound as in moon and blue. So, double O, we've got uh, lots of words pool, tool, stool, we've got boot. Root, two, zoo, room, broom, bloom, poop, troop, stoop. Uh, and then the EW, ooh sound, blue, like the wind blew, 
flu, like the bird flu, drew, chew, brew, crew, and Jew. Now, Jew refers to a Jewish person. Brew uh, means to make um, coffee, tea, uh, beer, um, in a in certain way, and bloom means flowering. Some plants have flowers, and when the flowers come out, we say that the plants are in bloom. Uh, stoop means to bend over, and I'll let the rest of these words um, be yours, teachers, if students have questions about them. Um, the next, the next um, section is going to be the true and false, but before we get to that, almost didn't remind you to do a spelling test after the students say these words to you, read these words to you. Uh, my choices for the spelling test would be a couple of them up here. I picked actually really one pair, road and road. You can pick more than one if you'd like. Um, and I picked three with double O, two, zoo, room. And I picked three with EW, blue, flu, and drew. Again, teachers, your choice. Use your judgment. And... Um, have the students read these words and then give them a spelling test. Press pause. Now we come to the true and false. And we also have this little lesson 66, which I forgot about on the uh, spelling. So you might want to have a second spelling test. Might be a good idea. Um, have the students read these as usual, once silently, giving you a true false, and then once um, out loud, giving you the final true false answer with a reason. So go ahead and do that before we get into the homophones. All right, my answers for the true and false. Joe drew a deer. Then the deer flew away. Now, this kind of thing can happen in cartoons, but doesn't happen in real life. So if the student is thinking cartoon, and maybe they've seen a cartoon where... Uh, the character draws the picture, and then the picture comes to life. They might say true and uh, have a decent reason for it. But otherwise, normally, it would be false. Number two. A black and white skunk is at the zoo. A black and white panda is at the zoo, too. This could be true. Um, I'm not, I don't really remember ever seeing skunks um in a cage at the zoo um, <laughs> because they could do a little number on those that are watching unless they're uh, enclosed. Uh, but you may have a visiting skunk that uh, comes in. This could go either way. I mean, if the student realizes that skunks are usually not uh, in the zoos as uh, animals to be viewed, you know, they may they may put a false, but it is possible, so it could be true. Number three, a bee flew on Moe's toe. It stung his toe. If he's barefooted, could happen, could be true. Number four, a red rose and a white lily can be in bloom. And since we said that bloom means flowering, both of these plants flower, and uh, roses can be red, lilies can be white, so this could be true. Now, Lesson 66, 
which I forgot about as far as spelling goes, homophones with the long U. And here we have do, do, and do. This kind of do means like your homework is due tomorrow. This kind of do is moisture on the ground. Let me get this up here so you can actually see it. Back here again, D-U-E. This kind of do means uh, your homework is due. This kind of do, D-E-W, means moisture on the ground in the morning um, or might be on other things like your window or the side of your house or something like that. And teachers, you can go into detail and explain all that condensation if you want. Um, and this kind of do means like do a job. It's a, it's a verb. It's an action verb usually. So I underlined it because it does not follow our rules of phonics. Uh, if it followed the rules of phonics, this would be another O here. But no, it's not. So it's unusual. These homophones, two, two, and two, uh, again, we have a couple ones that don't follow the rules, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, this two means also, like little sister wanted to go along to the movies, two. And to the movies um, is a way of using this type of two, T-O, like uh, to the movies, to the school, to wherever. Or it might be part of a an action verb like to run, to jump, to flip, uh, something like that. And this TWO2 is the number two, one, two. So again, we've got uh, some words that just don't follow phonetic rules. Teachers, as far as um, the spelling test here, uh, you know, your choice, you can um, give them, say, how do you spell the do that means your homework is due, and, and just give them, you know, an individual uh, words with a clue to their meaning, or you can just say to them, try to spell do three different ways, try to spell two three different ways, and then after they've done that and help is needed, of course, um, you can explain at that point. Uh, or ask them if they know the the meaning of these words. So you you have a lot of leeway here as to how to handle this. Um, don't look for mastery on this, especially with the younger students. Um, I think that is not something we should be doing at this point. Okay, now next lesson is going to be something different. We're going to, well, not different than what we've been talking about, but different than any of the other lessons that we've had. In lesson 67, we're going to have a list of elephant words. In school, teachers will call these sight words because they do not follow the phonetic rules. You've got to learn them by sight. And I call them elephant words because elephants supposedly have very good memories. And you're going to need a very good memory for these words. And we're going to have a couple of lists. This is uh, list number one. And one of the examples is going to be the word you. Not me, but you. And notice that it's not spelled Y-O-O. -O. It's not spelled Y-E-W, although there is actually a word, you, Y-E-W. It's an evergreen tree or shrub. But this isn't the one, this isn't the type of you we're using. We're using Y-O-U, meaning a person. So, should be very interesting, if not a little difficult, in Lesson 67. See you there.